All right, here we go. Over past the first map of the series about to get underway. It's a point that I made though that Trav, um, OG, as you say, a lot of reps in terms of official Counter-Strike at the moment. They're playing everything they can. And it's important that they cut out the outside noise. They don't let the community get to them, putting pressure, saying, oh, you guys have lost these matches. You should never have. You ran through the results recently. They would know that they're in the building phase. Those losses should not bother them. That's where the management comes into effect. General managers, psychologists. Yeah. Just need to make sure that you guys know what your goals are. You know what your roadmap is, your journey ahead. Stay true to the plan. Absolutely. And let's see if they can do exactly that. We are underway on overpass. OG. Keto. Nexa, Regali, Fiku, and Fascia. Bit of a, a sort of a bit part roster, of course, when I when they first announced it. It felt like they were just kind of using the leftovers from other rosters. I still kind of feel that. But uh, I have huge respect for these players. And especially for Regali after what he had to do toward the end of last year. But already, progress for Kanazit. We've got Jazar with the opening pick and the bomb down on A. Regali coming up from CT. First few players rushing toward him. Vero tries to take him down and does. Nice bit of aggression, but Fiku is still there. Removes his teammate Debo. Muted by Valve, of course. Doing just good, too good at the game. And Jazar, perhaps he's going to be too good at the game as well. Vera gets another. Two for him. Two for Vera. And now it's Nexa. And he's never really got into the action in this clutch yet. He's going to tap the bomb to try and keep them around. He's just looking for some kills. But that is nothing at all for Nexa. Three for Vera. The perfect start on T over pass. Well work pistol round coming through from them. Direct in towards the A bomb site. Just... Not really wasting any time, no hesitation, a lot of early pressure applied. Good post plant positions taken up as well. I mean, OG had just no idea where the fights were coming at them from and um, losing out most of those gunfights as well. Kanaz had opened up their account first year on their map pick. When we saw them against Apex here on Overpass, was it a 9 6 half? I think they managed six rounds on their T side. Is that correct? I'll double check that right now, but I think you're spot on. Uh, well, OG did have the choice coming into yes. overpass, Nine, obviously six, chose the CT side. Okay, so we're going to keep that in the back of our minds and watch this half play out. Regali, there we go, with the scout. And look at the damage done already to Kanazit. Ludwig out, Vera after three in the pistol, two HP in the following. He's got the utility too, he's going to want to try and deploy that or drop it over to a teammate before he goes down because... Of course, when you die, you only drop that one grenade of the belt you have. That could be critical utility when it comes to the late stages of a round. Regali, reposition to die. Jump spotting, as they so often do, and he hits another tag. But it's still a really important headshot from Jazar. At least it evens up the round, numbers-wise. But the numbers on their chests are still quite low. Yeah, but a chip damage would be enough to finish off a few of these players here on Knazit. And it looks like they're going to head in towards the same bomb site. Crossfire set up between Fiku and Kito. 34 seconds on the clock. What's the utility like? There's quite a bit of it here. Oh no, that's just unfortunate for Fasha. Didn't realize it was actually him. Thought it was uh, Fiku anyway. He just ventures out into the open, goes down. That's going to force Kito forward in towards Jazo. He's not looking in the direction. Kito, oh, will at least find a kill. There's so much pressure on him right now. And that's actually not a bad trade coming through. Next, left alone in the one versus two. Gonna phase through the smoke. Spotted though as the player jumps onto the bomb site. Eight seconds left remaining. Do they want to go for the kill? Jason lost his life. Debo will finish off the job though. Gets incredibly close, but can Nazar close it out? It's a really good round to win considering the health they had and the situation they were in. But I think OG will still be relatively content with that damage. Significant. Just that one player left alive. Maybe in a different situation, if they had a little bit more money, they might even consider another force here to keep that tier economy really low. But yeah, just pistols this time around. Nexa got close, took the first, but Ebo was on the advanced angle on top of dice. Went for the kills, as you say, not the plant. It's important to keep your gun out, I think, in a situation like that. Definitely made the right decision. And as a reward, now they just play against unupgraded pistols for the, the most part. No armor. Bar Keto. I mean, this is one of the most played maps for OG since they've come together with this roster, by the way. I think they played it eight times when I checked a bit earlier. Won it on three occasions. Complexity, Aurora, and Los Cogutos they were able to beat. The losses they've had, pretty uh, close losses as well. They've never had single digits on a loss on this map when they've lost. So, 
always putting up competitive performances. Means Kanazit have their work cut out for them against OG. It's not like this is a punish pick. Indeed. Oh, okay. That's gonna be oh, really uh, awkward for the uh, Mac 10. Yeah, that's Ludwig the... was so confused. <laughs> and I don't blame him. That's a really tough angle for the Mac 10 as well. Mid range. And hang on a second. Oh no. Tito has been removed. Oh, and somehow he gets the AK drawn and gets the second. Oh my goodness. How has he got away with that? Vera and Jazar now 2v4, but the health is nowhere for OG. They can get some kills in the side. That's basically their only chance because the bomb is still on Kanazit. They can go wherever they want with it. Oh, 30 wow. seconds and they're choosing the correct place to go. Yeah, they've read the situation really nicely. Jazar and Vira going to get themselves a two versus four here. No armor on the server for OG. There should be that AK recoverable yet. Regali's got it. Fiku, the first responder. Can have taken some time here to actually eventually plant the bomb, which means OG have been given more time to get in some forward positions here for the retake. Fiku's just holding the angle. Oh, Vera is dead. And that just puts so much pressure onto Jazar. One versus four clutch with the Max 10. Few low AP players, though, so it's not completely unthinkable that he could find a way to win this. And Beautiful. there we go, two kills coming through for him. Look at Fiku, though, oh. eventually coming through from Banky emerges. That's why they were taking the bait. And that's a full eco for OG that have managed to win out. That's a tough run for Kanazet. And well, I, what did I mention about them maybe considering the idea to force in that round, considering they killed four of Kanazet in the previous? Well, they didn't even need to fully force to win the round. Free AK, free Galil. We had a round on the board. And because of that damage done, it puts Kanazet down to a really weird buy. At least they can still have three AKs. And maybe two Mac 10s. Obviously, what Ludwig goes for. Maybe Tech 9, maybe Mac 10. What are we going for? We are going with Deagle. Fair play. He's confident on the Juan Deags, but OG will be delighted to get on the board so early, but earlier than expected. Uh, much earlier than expected, considering what they came into that round with. And look at what that's done to Knazic's economy as well. They have come into this round now with, uh, yeah, sure, three rifles of choice, but very light on utility. A Desert Eagle and the Mac 10. Yeah. Can they find a way short? to clap back? Yeah, this is the right way to do it, if, in my opinion. Go for those straight up duels towards short. Use that quality we've seen from them. We've seen it from the first couple of days on Avid today. But they get picked off first. Vera will go down to Nexa. Piku in task with switching between both angles around that pillar. Jazar will at least have a look towards long. And there's the off Gali. Won't be the first time I say that today. Tonight. No, certainly shouldn't be, especially if OG are going to be winning this. They're going to need him to be a big feature. Five versus three. Knaz is picking up the pieces, trying to shift themselves in towards the safe bomb site, but OG are well poised to deal with this. They've got three players of their own on this bomb site right now. Fashion going to take first contact. That's going to bait his keep contact off of one another very nicely right now. And that is going to be a flawless round coming through from OG. All five players staying alive against the gun round as well. That's a huge bonus for them now coming into the anti-eco. It's going to be a lovely day. For at least another maybe two minutes for OG in this following round. But yeah, when it comes to moments in the sun for OG, they've had very few lately. As I said, that winning that through that Cologne play-in was one of the best things they really managed to do recently and they were wins against Complexity and the Apex roster who haven't been too great themselves either so yeah I think it's fair to say of course it's not going to be new so I've got a new choice of Elige of course you know, integrating him into the roster so um, I wouldn't say they're overly impressive wins I guess just impressive when it comes to the pressure scenario playing in the play-in but then of course they made it through the play-in and then who do they play? They played Vitality and Navi. I managed to take a map off of, of Navi at least, but we know that uh, Navi are also in that sort of rebuilding phase right now. The game against Vitality was an absolute yeah. destruction for Vitality, especially on map one. 16 6 it was. Of course, Flames being integrated into Vitality seems to have integrated the best out of the changes from the roster shuffle so far. 
Absolutely. I mean, staying ahead of the curve, Vitality making a difficult call with that one, but evidently the correct one. Five, oh, fifth, five rounds been played just so far. Into the sixth round we go. Knazit been able to afford AKs and armor. Decent amount of utility to work with. Some forward positions here at the start of the round as well. OG have three rounds in a row to their name here, all off the back of winning that eco. Lovely angle for Keto right now. Well, he's been spot on the jump up, but Avid is still the victim anyway. Clean tap out of Keto. Lovely shot. And he can drop down and stay alive too. Magali took a lot of damage for his kill, but still got that kill. Next there on Pillar. They need a flash here. So a flash does come through. And actually doesn't really blind up Nexo at all, even though the kill seems to death, so. Just a nice shot from Vera to get that frag. But now Fash is in position toward heaven. And Fiku is still skirting the edge of the site. Making sure none, neither of Jayza or Debo can push further deep into that position. There's, there's another kill for him. Oh, wow. Comfortably done. Yeah, like I mentioned, I think he's probably been my favorite part of this OG roster so far. I've cast him three times. This is the fourth game in two weeks. So I've seen quite a lot out of him. Keto has caught my attention the most. Looking reinvigorated. I mean, keep in mind that he was dropped from the main team to the academy team for a period of time in big. Yeah, absolutely. Keto's been all around the shop, hasn't he? <laughs> to be honest. And you look at the level he's bringing to the server now in OG, you kind of scratch your head and wonder what was going on there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Kito has had, uh, a lot of these players, of course, has very storied histories, but Kito in particular has been, ever since really beginning of 2018, when he really came onto the map, alternate attacks, of course, his first relatively large, well-known uh, organization, moved to Epsilon, then Sprout, then Big, and as you say, back to the Academy and back through again, and this round is an absolute destruction, of course, on the pistols. Yeah. For him, two kills, one for Nexa, one for Fasha, and Avid. May picked up an AK, he's getting spammed through the plywood. And he just manages to get kind away. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, is there a wall that Knazit run into here in this qualifier? I mean, how long can they keep it up for? Are they legitimately, are they legitimately as good as the resu results suggest? Beating Furia, the, the rumored TSM team, the Zero Zero Nation team, you know, double overtime loss against Apex in the 2-0. Can they just keep this form up throughout? Or do they eventually run out of steam? It's a really good most question. most reliable teams that have been together for a, a long period of time struggle to be that consistent. I know, yeah. I mean, it's a good point. It is um, it is a kind of... It feels very random, doesn't it? That I think a lot of people who would have looked at this Open Qualifier and see who made it through to the close would be like, can I T? Victory, Zigzag, who on earth? And then they look at the players and they'll be like, okay, I see a few players I remember on Victory, Zigzag. But can I are uh, probably a lot more unknown to the broader audience. I think the most well-known overall is probably Jazar, of course, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Played with Pranax and Michael Ailey in 2018. Most well-known. Debo had that short stint on uh, the NIP Academy roster, of course. But, yeah, it's uh, sometimes difficult to, as you say, keep it up when you're still new and maybe you're not used to playing this much in one day, too long BO3s. And that uh, first map could have easily, to be honest, been a BO, uh, all three maps. Um, it felt that long. But it was incredibly exciting and enjoyable. I'm looking for more of that. And a good pick back for Jazar. This is his map. We've seen him do such good work again. And Regali's been heard. Debo's creeping up. Maybe he had some timing if he actually kept creeping up there. But Regali's going to check it and give him no chance at all. Great stuff from Regali. This is what we expect from him. There it is. Yeah, great work indeed, as you say, just dominating in towards bathrooms with those two kills. Vire does get a trade, and he tries to charge the board in towards the safe bomb site. He's got a hard clear fascia. That's an important kill. Molly in towards dumpster should guarantee himself a bomb plant here. In towards the front, he goes from Fiku oh. spots an angle. The spam, the wall bang will be enough to get the kill. That's so unfortunate for Vire. He was worried about a flank that could be coming through from lowers, and he was correct, because Nexa was actually coming up from there. I think he would have had enough time to plant if he'd committed immediately, though. Yeah, very good point. Unfortunate. His ankles stick out a little bit. 
Maybe he's been taking too much work in the gym. <laughs> Getting those too. thick ankles. <laughs> That's not what I was going for, and you know it. All right, all right. <laughs> Pistols again. Looking as it. Mactel on Avid, of course. Now we're really running the player through long pretty quickly, at least up toward balloons. Two players in that position. First bit of information spotted by OG. Vera creeping up now, looking for that timing. We see these players do this with an AK and with an AWP, of course. Very common thing to do to take control of short and look for a cheeky pick. And Avid, oh, we had a good chance to catch Fasha there. But Fasha defends stoutly and impressively against the players running him down. And Jazar, he's nice. blind on that situation, actually. Doesn't matter. But he still hits Fasha in the bonds. But it's still 4v2. Oh, right. It's a Check okay. that again there, Travel 3v2. Yeah, there we go. And you might have to reassess that again in a moment's time. He's got the AWP. Oh, my God. Okay, Keto chops his head right off. Ludwig left remaining. Hasn't gotten a kill yet on the map. Won't be getting one here in the ninth round either. 7-2. OG in complete control. Look at the money. Everybody is five digits right now in terms of their economy. They're sitting so pretty. All of the back of winning an eco round. They've won seven in a row right now have OG. Knazit have disappeared. Let's get some uh, missing person signs up in Sweden. Hopefully they're found quickly. Get the local authorities on the case. Because we want to see a good series. And yeah, it's Knazit, a lot on the line. Knazit have not disappointed us. I bigged them up in that first game against Apex and they delivered despite losing 2-0. That was just a superb game. Touches right, left and centre by Avid. Vera chimed in for some as well. And this round is finally going in their favour. This is a, a good way to trade their way in. Jazos pick toward mid is a classic one, of course. Riali went super aggressive off the back of that AWP pick. Wanted to go and change it up slightly, and why not? I mean, look at the money. They've got four, three players, actually, on uh, quintuple digits. So he has that little bit of cash to burn to try and do something slightly different. Next to Keto, maybe play together on a site, gamble a site, and see what happens. Yeah, that's... That tends to be the option, right, in a 2vx situation where you've got a, a disadvantage on the CT side. Group up, gamble, hope that they're coming towards your bomb sites. Unfortunately for Nexon and Keto, they've uh, gambled incorrectly. So they'll probably just... I, I mean, would you even save your guns here? I think it's even just worth going for it to try and get damage. This is the 10th round going into the 11th round next. Only five rounds left at the most in the half. I said the most. <laughs> there will only be five rounds left. Yeah. It doesn't even look like they're interested, though. Yeah, the nade chunks both Vera and Ludwig down to 50 apiece, basically. But yeah, if they can play for the exits, that would be the way to go. Because, as you say, they've got a load of money. So playing for the exits and taking the risk of possibly going down is a good call. But they're going to commit to it properly. Ludwig is 0-9, and nine, by the way. So, rough start to the game for him. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like he did his most of his work um, with the second orb. Was that the CT side yes. of uh, Anubis? Yes, he was the uh, he was he was secondary orping a lot on overpass, trying to get into the action, and it was pretty pretty helpful in a few rounds. But yeah, I feel like that's where he did most of his work actually. Seven three, Knazit's back to winning ways. Really important round win for them there as well. Needs to be the start of something. Problem is they're gonna have to do this in hard mode just because there's gonna be so many gun rounds here for OG. The more rounds they lose, the more round loss bonus they get to continue to subsidize their economy. So it could just be gun rounds for the rest of the half year for OG with the amount of money they've got. You don't know how expensive it is on CT, but yeah, I think he, he may be right. Tag there, and Keto will hear that. How close Avid is, and he free faces for Vera too. That's actually kind of smart. Falls back, kind of leaves Connector entirely as the shift comes up. Vera's trying to stay silent and then just refaces at a random timing, catches them off guard. Good risk to take. Sometimes those sort of risks are um, calculated, of course. That one certainly was. Ugali has full position all the way pushed up long. And Ludwig could walk into it if he's unlucky. Garley, that's brilliant timing oh, as well. 50 seconds yeah, to go. We'll be expecting him to be walked back into mid and catches his counterpart. 
not an easy shot to hit either. Debo trying to chase him down. That's why he goes through the last few ticks of the molly. But Regali is rounded the corner. And it's Ludwig who's on the opposite side. We've already mentioned what a tough time he's had here on overpass. Does Regali pursue him? He needs to. His life is on a timer right now. Kizo's coming through to try to support him, but he's not going to get there in time. Look at the bait being taken. Ludwig, don't peek, though. No, you're doing everything perfectly. You've taken uh... the bait. It's by design. Why haven't you not waiting for Dalmatian to peek? Dalmatian. That's Debo, obviously, but yeah, <laughs> that's just the name Steam have given him. I know. But surely he's got to wait for, for Debo. He knows he's coming up long. That's why exactly. he's even baiting the shots out. Why would you peek? I mean, a bit of miscommunication. Like there. And it can happen, right? I mean, as you say, uh, as far as I understand, I could be wrong on this. Maybe someone who has more knowledge of Knesset than, than me could, could tell me I'm wrong or not. But I'm pretty sure, like, for example, Victory and Zigzag have been practicing with each other. That's been confirmed to me by one of the players. Um, I don't know how long Knesset have. I feel like this is more of a mixed team in general. So I just got, but just put a squad together for one of the open quals. Played really well. Had fun with it. Talented group. Oh, Debo. There we go. He spots the information. This Shot is a really taken, important but... round here. Yeah, they, they need this one. This is one of those must win yeah. ones. Keto's 16 and 4, by the way. Uh -huh. Just so you know. Putting up monstrous numbers right now. He's going to aggression in towards water coming from the inside. Fuku should die to the molly. He does, but Nexa will ensure a man advantage. Lovely little interplay there between Nexa and Fiku. If Knazit lose this round, and if they don't get a bomb plant, 9-3 becomes 10-3. They won the first two rounds of the map, lost to Nico, and it's just all gone pear-shaped since then. There's a bit of util here. Two smokes, two flashes. Avid's going to lead the charge right now. Creeps his way forward. Nexa has three positions. Avid's going to walk straight into him, but he still gets the shot anyway. Keto's going to be the go. responder, but he suffers the same treatment. We've saw, we, we saw a lot of this from Avid against Apex, and it's great to see him bringing it against OG as well. Yeah, two insta headshots. Love that. Need a lot more of the same, though. And Regali and Fasher with a kit and smokes available. I'm going to give this one a consideration. They can get one kit kill back then I think they definitely would have uh, pushed a bit harder and Regali would have come down connector to give it a proper go but as it is saving is the right choice as I said still 12.5 on Nexa so they're going to be absolutely fine and I think maybe the save now does probably absolutely confirm they'll be fine to the end of the half might even have a little bit of left over who knows A good round for Knazit to win. You mentioned it was a must win, and thanks to Avid, the main man from the day so far. I mentioned his performance, of course, against Apex. It was just a superb game from him. 73 kills, I believe. I think his next closest teammate was on 52. Next closest rating was 0 0.99, and his was 1.45. Like, for yeah. the sake. Just absolutely god tier two maps, and long maps too, of course. That's what's impressive is you'll often see a player drop off after such a, a high level performance on a map that goes double overtime. They can't keep that form up into the next map immediately afterwards, but Abbott could. All right, eight to four. Kanazza did really get reset. There's still a few counts of round loss bonus behind them. So the loss wouldn't be the end of the world yet economically, but it's not how they're going to be thinking right now. Just looking need. to build themselves into the round here. Yeah, this is what Overpass is like, right? I've had multiple uh, seen multiple discussions, of course, about what map maps people hate. And Overpass is usually one that is, by consensus, liked a lot. But there are a few pros out there that just that say, oh, oh, t so is just so frustrating how slow you have to take it to actually get map control sometimes. I get it, but overall this map is just so good for retakes, for sick plays. How good it looks in CS2 certainly excites me for what it will look like and what those plays will look like on the new revamped game. Regali, gap in divider. He gets some information and it helps out Fasher for a pick, but Regali's going deep for the second attempt and he will make that second attempt successful. Avid swings, headshot from Regali, and Regali has those multi kill rounds every now and then. <laughs> Three on the board, second headshot as well. Overkill. 800 damage on two players. And it leaves Debo with 29 HP, stuck on long. 
this is one of the best performances I've seen from Regali so far in an OG jersey. Not just because of the numbers he's putting up, but because of the impact that he's having. It's kind of easy to just rack up kills as an AWPA, especially on a CT side, but it's the impact. That's what matters right now coming through from the Romanian sniper. Three kills in this round for him. Debo at least going to stay alive or carry his AK through. But it's an important round for, uh, for OG as they go up 9-4. Still in complete control here. And that was an important round for them to win just to maintain control and keep a lot of pressure on Kanazid. Because if they lost that one, it kind of feels like it's an open-ended game at that point once again. OG could still be on for 11-4 here. Win this next gun round and it actually looks like the likely scoreline at that point. Yeah, very likely. Ludwig, Ludwig is at least off the mark with his one kill now, so... He's uh, broken the duck, but regardless, this is what we saw so much from on Copenhagen Flames. The confidence and the ability to keep refacing and get those multi-kill rounds. He would just take games by the scruff of the neck on Copenhagen Flames, and sometimes basically solo carry, it felt like. Obviously that's not the way Counter-Strike works, but sometimes that's uh, the feel of the scoreboard and the feel of the eye test of the game when he play so, played so well. Towards B bombs like against Faction Force and as it next to draws first blood. Pizza completely blinded, only good damage. Double kill on the entry coming through. Fiku with the response, but he's taken so much damage in the process. And it's gonna be a double flank through Monster Tunnel. Fasha wants to allow Fiku to go through first. He's the low HP player, get the information to where Devo's positioned. Flash is phenomenal. Fiku completely blind. They're gonna be Molly back as well. Double peak even to just try and finish off Fasha. Where's Regali? He's also come through towards the monster tunnel right now. He's the one who's holding the right side. He's missed the shot. That'll cost Fasha his life. And that's the end of the round. Oh. I mean, Regali might as well just go for us. They've got enough money to buy in the next round anyway. He has got a kit, but... Oh! Unfortunately, not going to be able to find the kill, at least not quickly enough. That looked hilarious as he comes through the monster tunnel, finds a pair surfing on the wall. But yeah, the, the, even I think if he held that, I reckon it may have been slightly too far gone anyway. We were just Agreed. Double... Doubly sure that all is good. It most certainly is at least fine. Now, this is actually, it's not really that bad at all. Like, I think I'm uh, pretty com confident in saying that they're okay with five. Um, and it could even be six as well. And so, of course, as you so correctly pointed out earlier, that uh, Apex won their CT half an hour past nine six. So, it's not really much different. And as it won't be, I felt like, I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? Like, in general, watching this game, it's felt more dominant for OG, but the scoreline could easily be yes. exactly the same. Exactly, I, I completely agree with you. Oh, look at the flashes over the top of Monster right now. Great for him to get that kill on next. He desperately wants to trade, but he's only going to be good for damage. Where's the, there's the flash. Fiku, if he waits for that flash, he gets at least two kills. Just too hasty on the swing. Squanders the opportunity. I mean, if... The, just based off the point you made right now, if this half finishes 9-6, even though it feels like OG have dominated, the, the scoreline just doesn't reflect that. Exactly. It's weird, isn't it? Sometimes it's... I guess it's because the domination has certainly come in terms of the economy, and I guess that's probably something that OG might look back on and say, this should have been a lot better. We've had money the whole that's half. What I'm thinking. Yeah. We've had money basically the entire half, and we have not put it to as good a use as it possibly could have been. And that flash in toward Monster... That Kito some information is not going to work out either. Fashion now has a lot on his plate. Everyone's coming his way. All four. He gets one. He gets two. He's looking for a possibility of a third. He's repositioned beautifully. Fasha, this is an absolute masterclass right now. He gets all four. Oh, <laughs> Fasha. What a play. We're going to go to a break. And when we're back, it'll be the second half.
And we're back. And I think Knazit will be relatively happy with how that half panned out. Six was on the plate in front of them, but Fasher snatched it away and ate it for himself with a beautiful quad kill <laughs> hold. And uh, that gives OG at least double digits on the half on CT. Yeah, Fasher really gobbled him up there, which lifted his numbers quite a lot. Keto and Regali were the chief destroyers for the most part in that first half, both racking up 16 kills. If OG win this pistol round, that's going to put a serious amount of pressure onto Nazik. Remember, we go to uh, Inferno after this. That's OG's map pick, and it's a very comfortable map for them as well. Not too sure what to expect out of Knazik on Inferno. I don't think we, we have much of a sample size for them. So it's probably kind of a similar situation here where you feel like they have to win on Overpass to force us to Mirage and stand a chance and win the series. Yeah. I think so too. Control for OG already to a front bathroom, and Kanazit have very happily given that up. Debo. Oh, this could be rough. He's pushing up just as they're pushing up. Oh, surely he gets overwhelmed. Yeah, that's unfortunate timing. And now Jay's has been gooshed on the back of the site as well. Must feel so, so pathetic. Wow. You just can't do a single thing. Most painful feeling in CS when you know you've got five players coming your way and they hit head you once. It just feels like it's so over. Oof. And Keto will even take yeah. Avid nicely as well. Unfortunately, Avid used up all the sauce in the first match. There's no more sauce, Trap. Yeah. Well, he's the one. He's saucy on the server right now. He's up to 20 kills, 16 rounds played. Avid's got four frags. Man got 73 in two maps in the series before this. Repeat that last bit again. I missed what you said. I said he's got four kills here on the map so far. He had 73 in the two maps in the series before this. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. You uh, you glitched out slightly on my end. Oh, so, okay. All right. Yeah. All good. I think it happens sometimes on Discord because there's a big problem with the cable uh, that connects Europe to, to South Africa at the moment. Oh, really? So, like okay. the undersea cable. So the internet still works, but the connection is just very disrupted. Um, so Discord lags out sometimes. Yeah. Um, Connecting to international servers can be a bit of a mare. Yeah, just just South Africa things, unfortunately. Yeah, classic, right? As if, uh, you know, we you don't have enough, enough on our plates. <laughs> just connect us from the world while you're at it. Oh, dear. <laughs> Anyone wants to uh, adopt 26-year-old man from South Africa? I can assure you he did the cooking and cleaning, and he's very cute. I can. Well. Oh, god damn. I can do it all. <laughs> Right, OG trying to avoid getting four sport on here. Five seven, Deagle. Two scouts this time. We saw Jazer, of course, and Ludwig mentioned double orping on the previous series. This time we're double scouting. And Avid's in the perfect position. He's in with Nexus Mac 10, but he hits the headshot first. A lot of damage done around regardless. He's been tagged as well. I know there's at least one scout in play. Dangerous stuff. And they have a pick, but they're walking wounded right now. Looks like they still want to try and barrel in towards the safe bomb site, but that works out perfectly for Kanazza. They've got three of their four players on the safe bomb site. This is exactly what they'd be hoping for. Ludwig with his scouts. Oh man, he tags up another three players. Tenderized right now. Jazar flying around with his scout spots the head. We'll find a kill, but Keto continues to be the key. He <laughs> unlocks the bomb site. Keto's been insane in this series. Yeah, he's, he's been in great form just since he pulled the OG jersey on, man. I feel like he's in slightly more favorable roles as well, which has to help. Sure. But it's just lovely to see that he can kind of live up to that, right? He can yeah. take on those roles. He can assume more responsibility. He's got more firepower than what we got to see out of him on big. Just because of how he was more limited. Well, five. Four, five. Oh, it could have been so much more with all those tags out of the scout. Three tags. They only get one kill in the round. Indeed. Tell of what if, perhaps, for Knazit today. We have to look back at their Apex game and say, oh, we could have taken both maps. It was a genuine shot. And maybe we, were, we would have been in the upper bracket to play Bet Boom. 
Yeah. See, that's going to be uh, going on right now, of course. I think the games of this bracket, we had that marathon opening series between My goodness, uh, it's NIP done. and one win. Yeah, that was one by NIP in the end. Just 28-24 on overpass. That's... What an incredible game. 52 rounds of Counter-Strike for one map, and it was the third map of the series, by the way. Ridiculous. But uh, pretty sick to watch us too. And BetBoom are doing what I expected of them today so far. They are beating Apex comfortably on map 1. Probably 13-6 at the time I speak. And NIP will play 9 in around about 15 minutes. That's going to be a very interesting matchup too. Whoever loses Let's that, talk of course, about goes the, through uh, to AOG probably. That's exactly what I was going to ask you is... What does the next stage of the bracket look like here in the lower bracket? Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like for me, as we uh, spectate this full eco, of course, probably while yeah. we're talking over it. Um, but yeah, um, I would say, looking at this now, let's say Apex lose. They go to the bottom portion of the bracket, then one win beat Victory Zigzag. We're looking at Apex versus one win, then OG nice versus game. one of NIP or nine. And then the lower final. Uh, ooh, that's going to be a tough one. I'd uh, say either uh, NIP or 9 should beat OG in that matchup, by yeah. the way. Yeah, I would take 9. Uh, 9 versus 1 win, lower NIP. final. Uh, NIP 1 win then, a rematch, perhaps? Oh, oh, you'd say NIP to beat 9 and, and, and 9 into the lower bracket? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can get behind that, actually. I, I like that. 9 versus 1 win. That'd actually be a banging game as well. Yeah. And then a bet boom versus NIP upper bracket final. Oh, sign me up. I might, uh, if, if bet boom just sweep this qualifier, it looks like I might uh, miss out on the opportunity to cast them, unfortunately. <laughs> just evading you at every turn. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you've got two more games tomorrow as we just did witness that very breezy anti eco for OG. Now it's do or die. No two ways about it for Knazit. There was a moment in that first half where it really looked like they'd gotten their things together. I think it was, you know, 8-5 or something like that after OG's dominance. But that is now a world away. 13-5 OG in complete control. Winning this gun round would put a nail in the coffin. Probably the final one, actually. Indeed. He's charging through to take short control. Only him. He's up super, super fast, actually. Not uh, opposed to taking just a heads-up peek into the site. He's not going to go any further. JSL's going to need more of those opening picks and more of the multi-kills we know he can do on CT side to keep his team in this opening map. Especially with map 2 being what it is too. That's what favours OG so much. This is the one that was kind of thought as a must win as you pointed out. And that's it. And Keto right now is absolutely smurfing on them. He's easy on the eye, isn't he? Looks good, man. One of those players is just, uh, yeah, satisfying to watch. This next is going to go for the bomb plant. Oh, Devo wants to deny it so badly. He runs into the molly, but that just gives his life up now to Damn. man advantage. I, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. It's not like you had to go for such a big risk or a gamble. It's not like the round had completely fallen apart. Avid gets a kill. Keto finally cut down, but it looks like they're accepting their fate. They're just going to save... And this is off the back of Debo just charging through. That feels really rough. Yeah. Some decisions, of course. Thinking that maybe he's not been heard with the mortar, of course. Breaking on the ground. Obviously makes a very loud sound cue. He's up pretty fast. Thinking, okay, I can at least get the one kill and die, which would deny the bomb plant. That would de delay the clock for everyone else to rotate. The bomb wouldn't have gone down as soon. But, yeah. In the end, Fascia. Eyes on stalks. Yeah. Knew what was the going problem on. was that the the molly ticked him down so much that Fasha didn't need to fire many bullets to get the kill. So it was such a big gamble from Debo. And like I say, in the four versus four, you don't have to go for such a big gamble. I mean, if it's four v two and you deny the plant and there's no more time to win the round, yeah, I, I love that play. Or maybe if there's more pressure coming at the same time from bank, right? Then maybe there's three players pushing forward at the same time. Anyway, that's in the past. 14-5. Kanazza's able to muster up a decent buy here with a couple players staying alive. Haven't won around yet here on their CT side. Yeah, 
You can see, like, the way they're posturing towards short there. They, they want to take control. They want to take aggressive control. They want to play it as a group. Um, but taking aggressive control towards short, might be some poor timing on that. Because that is when OG pop out monster. This grenade will easily finish off this kill unless he hops away. There it is. Touchdown. And Nexa. <laughs> Devo comes charging forward and catches Nexa off guard. Just says, okay, we'll have this Molotov then. I can't do much else. An advantage for Kanazit. But look where Fasha is. He's pushed all the way through long, all the way through the A site. He's going to be in bank in a moment. It's all now a matter of timing as to how this works out for Fasha. Can he get some kills in the back? Where is he going to pull the trigger? Where is he going to show his hand? They are going to still commit to B rather than rotate up. They had the time to rotate up. But with the lack of control on bathrooms, that's when they don't know. And that Fasha will decide just to flank the site instead. And he gets that kill towards Jazar, the critical one. That's the awkward Big move, body. of course. Ooh, the and the Molotov is so good. The boost, as you say, Ludwig gets one, but only one. Rigali trades it with the AK. 2v2, 20 seconds to get the bomb down. And Debo and Avid are still around the Debo area. Wins. Debo in heaven surely gets a kill. Does. And now heaven is all that Rigali needs to worry about instantly. Because that is the main frag first. That's the one that will deny his push back toward the bomb. Eight seconds. The bow's just making an absolute masterclass of this. Shoulder peeking over and over. Delaying the time for Regali. He can't pick up the bomb. He has to go for the kills. And Avid takes it in the end. Well played, Debo. That was perfect. Yeah, really well worked around coming through there from Debo. Just in terms of his decision making, his game sense there to wrap back around heaven. Backstab the one player. Then just preserve his life there. Not give up any unnecessary gunfights to Regali. 14-6. Kanazik finally able to piece around together on their CT side. They do look like a different team compared to what we saw against Apex earlier on, though. Not nearly as composed. Not as much conviction in the gunfights, either. Looking more like a mix. Yeah, it's looking like how they, in the eyes of many, should look like. We were just, I yeah. mean, me in particular, were just expecting quite a lot of good things. Having watched them myself... My personal stream in the open qualifier. Yeah. So. Oh, Ludwig. Oh, Ludwig. Oh, oh he's Ludwig. Dead. Oh, my God. Fire <laughs> the Molly flames. literally, like, collided it with his face. Abbott, though, should get the kill. He does Gito. Gito never expects him there, but Regali in a great position to trade. My God, Debo, you're dancing with fire, my friend. Oh, okay. Regali will actually end up going down there. That's the bomb that's been dropped as well, making life a bit awkward right now. Good timing on that molly as well to keep Fiku at bay. They don't know for sure that he's there. It's actually going to force him backwards as well. How do OG piece this round together? What's the call out of Nexa in the three versus three? 50 seconds. They're both tiptoeing around. Hurting on 8 HP. Jazar taking up that divider position once again. Looks like OG are committing to B, though. All three players going towards short, trying to make their way down off the railing, onto the ledge, into the water. Silently, they managed to do so. They're going to be actually going to be walking monster with the bomb here. Time could be an issue if they do that, but it should still be enough. 15 seconds to get it down. Vera now has to go huge. He sees all the utility come in, and he hears monster, and a big swing comes through. But Nexus was too strong. Debo tries to pounce to at wow. least and put the bomb on the ground. I understand why he went for it, but it leaves it up to Jazar 1v3. We know he's sick. Can he do it at the best possible time? Yes, the first, but Nexus' position is perfect. Headshot angle on the edge of the default box. And Jazar is gone as well. OG, map points, and plenty of them. Yeah, nine to be precise. And look at the money here for Knazard or lack there of a P90 for Debo. That's a Let's frustration go. buy if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Do you ever unironically use the P90? I personally don't. Okay. Are you just ashamed and you're scared to tell us the truth? I used it on CS2 recently to see how it felt like. Oh, okay. There we go. The truth comes out, everybody. Trav, the resident P90 user confirmed. <laughs> Get DeSoto to write an article about it. Okay, Get relax. Jake Lucky on the tweets. Relax. Your new hot story. <laughs> it's not like it's a cardinal sin. Oh, uh, okay. Probably not as bad as the bison. Jays are going to step into Regali. Of course. Regali quick enough on the trigger. Great awareness from Regali. He would have been watching the deep angle, but gets peeked from much closer. And Kito spots the feet of Debo. Fiku going to throw the support back. Kito to peek off of. Completely blinds Debo. There goes your P90. 
Unlucky. Ludwig, half full bang onto Regali, at least removes the orc, but Kito's looking to trade it. And there's two players right next to him, though, and he's not going to be aware of Vimmer being so close. So that actually baits Kito into his death. Nexa and Fiku. Long-term teammates now, of course. Nexa has a full utility belt to work with. But look at Avira. Still on the lurk. Fiko. Fiku probably not going to hear anything just yet. But <laughs> unfortunately, I think while they're teaming back up together, the timing, wow. I think, might not work out. Because Vera's going to be caught in the Oof. open. Yeah, exactly as I thought. He was just oh. shifting around the whole map, trying to look for something. But... With such being such on such low health, it's always tough. And now it's Ludwig. Very rough game so far to save it for Kanazit. He's on towards short. He's in the right position to do something about this. Smoke up. They're going to try and go for the plant. Is it going to be denied? It is. 1v1. Looked for by Fiku and spotted out. 60 HP versus 50. Bomb plant will be planted safe by Fiku. Behind the box, Ludwig is going to be out of bullets in a minute. And because of that, that's wow. what costs him his life.